Top 10. How to apply the same intrinsic height to widgets in Flutter. Let's start with a row widget where we have an image and also a text inside. Next, we want to make all widgets inside the row as tall as the tallest widget within the row, in this case our text. And to do this, you simply wrap around the row an intrinsic height widget and also within the row, you need to set the cross axis alignment to stretch. With this, if we hot reload, then the image will take the same height as the tallest widget inside the row, which is our text widget. In another example, we have a row widget with three containers that have each a different height. To set the height of all the widgets to the tallest widget inside the row, in this case the red one, therefore you simply need to wrap an intrinsic height widget around your row and also set again the cross axis alignment to stretch. With this, all the widgets take the same height as the tallest widget and you can also change this height and then you see that all the widgets take the maximum height of 250 pixels. The same you can apply to a column, we have containers each with a different width. And now to make all the widgets as wide as the widest widget within the column, therefore you wrap this time an intrinsic width widget around and you also set the cross axis alignment to stretch. As a result, all the widgets take the width of the widest widget within the column widget. Top 9. How to wrap widgets to the next line in Flutter. Inside a row, we have five colored containers, whereas we have an overflow error since the screen width has not enough space to display all five containers. Simply replace the row by a wrap widget to wrap the widgets to the next line. You could add horizontal spacing between the widgets, and also vertical spacing between the widgets. By default, the wrap widget doesn't take the full width of the screen. Simply wrap a size box around to expand the wrap widget to the full screen width. With this, you could align the widgets to the center or align the widgets to the end. Also, you could use other alignments such as space evenly, space around or space between. Top 8. How to add space between widgets in Flutter. Inside a column, we add three colored containers. Add a size box between the green and red container. With this, we have a fixed space of 50 pixels between these widgets. To take up the whole available remaining space, use a spacer widget. With this, the space moved between the red and blue container. Also, if you have multiple spacer widgets, they will divide the whole available space equally among them. Finally, you could use the flex factor to divide the whole available space into three portions, whereas the first spacer takes one portion and the second spacer takes two portions. You also could remove the spacer widgets and instead you could use the main axis alignment space evenly, space around or space between. If you combine the spacer widget with these main axis alignments, then the spacer widget has priority and the main axis alignment doesn't matter anymore. Top 7. How to fit a widget into the available space of another widget in Flutter. Inside a green container, we place a text widget. To make the bigger text widget to fit into the container, simply wrap a fitted box around. With this, the text scales down to fit into the container and the text font size is ignored. Also, if you change the container size, the text will still fit into the container. In case you place a smaller text widget into the container and then you wrap a fitted box around, the text widget will scale up and ignores its smaller size. Simply add the box fit scale down to keep the smaller size. And now if the container gets smaller than the text widget, then the text widget will scale down, however it will never scale up. Top 6. How to use the expanded widget to create screen responsive layouts in Flutter. Inside a column we add a green container, and a red container, whereas each container has a fixed height. Next, to force a widget to fill vertically the entire available space, wrap the widget simply inside of an expanded widget. With this, the red widget fills the entire height till the bottom of the screen and the height of the widget is simply ignored. Let's also wrap the expanded widget around the green container. As a result, the whole vertical space is divided among all the expanded widgets and every expanded widget gets an equal amount of space. Let's also include a flex factor for each of the expanded widgets. 
With this, the whole height is divided into three portions, whereas the green container gets one portion and the red container gets two portions. Below the red container, we add an expanded container with a flex value of three. As a result to the three existing portions, we have three more portions, whereas the blue container gets three out of these six portions. You also can combine expanded widgets with not expanded widgets, whereas the fixed size widgets get first of all the space that they need. And after all the fixed size widgets got their space, then the remaining part is divided among the expanded widgets. Inside the column widget, the expanded widgets are only expanding vertically, which means if I add a width to a container, then you see that the width is not ignored inside of a column. On the other hand, if you replace the column by a row, then the expanded widgets expand only horizontally and not vertically. So inside a row, the width is ignored for expanded widgets and the height you can simply change to other heights and this will be not ignored and not expanded. And finally, the expanded widget can be only used inside of a row or column and needs to be the direct first shard. You cannot wrap any other widget around the expanded widget. If the expanded widget is not the first direct shard of a row or column, then you get this error. To fix this, simply make sure that you remove the padding and place it instead inside of the expanded widget so that the expanded widget is the first child inside of the row. Top 5. How to use the flexible widget for creating layouts in Flutter. Inside a column we add three colored containers, whereas we wrap the blue container inside of a flexible widget. By default the flexible widget takes the full height of 250 pixels. However, the flexible widget is not required to take the 250 pixels, it can also take less of the space. In case you have multiple flexible widgets, then the whole available space is equally divided between all the flexible widgets. You also could add a flex factor to your flexible widgets. With this, the whole available space is divided into three portions, whereas the blue container gets one portion and the green container gets two portions. If you set the red container to a smaller size, then notice that the flexible widgets will in this case not take more than 250 pixels of the space. Instead use the expanded widget, in case both widgets should take the whole available space. Let's also look at a practical example. We have a green fixed size container and also a flexible widget which has by default 400 pixels in height. Next we replace the blue container by an image. And finally, depending on how many widgets you display inside this green container, the flexible widget will change its size. Also, if the flexible widget gets too small, you can use a layout builder instead. And with this, we display another widget in case our flexible widget gets too small. And if we have more space, we display the image again. Top 4. How to create responsive designs using the media query in Flutter. From the media query, you can get the screen width that we want to display inside of a text widget. With this, we display the entire screen width. If we change the window width, then this number is also changing. Also, you can get the entire screen height from the media query that we display inside the text widget. As a result, if we change the window height, then this number is also changing. Next, inside a row, we have a blue container with a width of 200 pixels and on the right side we place a red expanded container. This blue container we only want to display inside the web and desktop version, therefore we create a breakpoint. If the screen width is greater than 600 pixels, then it is the desktop mode, otherwise we have the mobile mode. And now we could use these helper methods to create a responsive design that adapts to different screen sizes, Therefore, we display this blue container only inside the desktop mode. With this, we only display the red expanded container in the mobile version. If we go above 600 pixels in width, then also the sidebar is displayed. Top 3. How to create designs for portrait and landscape orientations in Flutter. Simply use the media query to get the current orientation of the device and then based on it you can display the portrait or landscape mode. For the portrait mode we display a text portrait and otherwise a text landscape. With this we display by default the portrait mode for the phone and also for the tablet mode. 
If you change the orientation of your tablet or your phone, then the landscape mode is displayed. Instead of getting the orientation from the media query, you could also use the orientation builder. Whereas within the builder you get the orientation to check if your device is in portrait or landscape mode. Next, instead of creating a separate portrait and landscape design, you could also combine both of it inside of the same scaffold. In this case we display a grid view with two columns for the portrait mode and for the landscape mode we want to display three columns. As a result we have two columns for the phone and also for the tablet. If we change the orientation to landscape for the tablet and for the phone then we display three columns. Next you could use the media query to get the shortest side of your phone. With this you can check if your phone is a mobile phone or a tablet device or any other device. So if it is a mobile phone then we for example want to display a drawer in our scaffold. Otherwise we display no drawer. As a result we have this drawer menu icon only on the phone to open the menu. Next we wrap the grid view into a row and then we can also display before the grid view the blue sidebar if it is not a mobile device. With this the sidebar is not displayed on the phone however on other devices such as the tablet or the web and for the phone we have this drawer menu icon to open the sidebar. Top 2. How to create responsive designs using the layout builder in Flutter. With the media query you can get the entire screen size of your device. The height and also the width is always updated in case the screen dimension of your device change. Instead of the media query you could also use the layout builder to get the width and height of your device. Usually you use the constraints to create a responsive design and then based on a breakpoint you decide to display a mobile version or a desktop version. With this we display the mobile version in our web browser and also on every phone because the device's screen width is smaller than 600 pixels. Otherwise if you stretch the window width above 600 pixels then we have the desktop version that we are displaying now and this is basically a row with a content and a sidebar next to it. Also you could wrap around this red content container another layout builder. Whereas this time the constraints will get the size of this container. So you see that this red container has a different width than the screen width that is displayed below on the right side. And finally you can use the width of this container to create another breakpoint. And we use then this flag to simply put another color for our container. As a result the container is black because it is smaller than 400 pixels. If we change the container width above 400 pixels then you see it changes to the red color. So all in all with the layout builder you can get the width and height of a specific widget. Whereas if we put here the media query inside then you notice that the media query size only reflects the entire screen size. In this case the width of the window.